What is up, Nifs? It's been a long time since I've been in this set, in the studio, I guess you could say, in my sister's bedroom. Well, her old bedroom. Thanks, Kylie. Since it is that time of year, I am here to give you some fantasy football tips. And today we are going to focus on the quarterback position. So I'm going to have some sleepers, breakouts, busts, and bargains for you, all at the quarterback position. I've done a lot of research and I'm very excited to share it all with you, so let's get right into it. Austin and Kent, the boys are back again. Not like those kids on your television set The long show above the rest Cause it's time Yeah! It's not your father's show Woo! It's not your father's show Yeah! It's not your father's show Woo! It's not your father's show I just want to give a little bit of a, some background on my projections and my rankings and whatnot. Basically, what I have done is I looked at all the quarterbacks this year that I thought would be interesting fantasy football prospects. I haven't done rookies yet because I'm not absolutely sure if any of them are going to start or not. As the preseason rolls around, I may add some rookies into my projections. Uh, I kind of like Deshaun Watson. And I think Trubisky looked really sharp the other night. Kaiser could have more upside. I think it's safe to say he has more upside than any of the Browns quarterbacks. So those guys do intrigue me a little bit. But what I did for these projections is I looked at all the quarterbacks that I thought could make an impact in fantasy football this year. And I basically looked at their stats from last year, found out their averages, average points per game last year. Then I looked at their averages in the last five years in which that quarterback has started over half the games. So basically, you know, taking all of the, the, the relatively healthy seasons of each quarterback. I averaged their passing yards, passing touchdowns, rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, and turnovers in those last five years. I also got career averages in all of those categories except turnovers. I don't know why I did that, but I figured having the five-year average for the turnovers would be enough. If they hadn't played five years yet, I only did their career, and I indicated that it was that, that was why they don't have anything in their five-year section. And then I'm also paying close attention to ESPN's ADP average draft positions and basically what you're doing there is you're looking at where some people may be falling farther than they should be some quarterbacks are being selected way too early and I just wanted to get a feel for who is really going to give me great value because when you're drafting a quarterback especially in a 10 team or an 8 team league you should wait for as long as possible. Basically until he falls, until the guy you want falls into your lap. And you should have a few guys that you think would be serviceable. Because there are so many options, you don't want to be the guy that reaches on a quarterback early. The difference between the top end quarterbacks and the back end starting quarterbacks is much less than the difference in a top end running back and a bottom end running back. Same with receivers, there's a lot of, there's a lot less depth at the top. Tight end is kind of similar to quarterback. Usually you should probably wait on tight end. Basically just wanted to, you know, give you guys a glimpse behind the scenes of what I was doing, the work I was putting in to give you guys these awesome projections and rankings. Now that you know, let's get into it. I wanna start with 
a guy named Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is a, a very interesting fantasy football player, and I think a lot of people are sleeping on him this year. But Russell Wilson last year, with a terrible offensive line, injuries and all, passed for over 4,200 yards, and he also passed for 21 touchdowns. I expect Russell Wilson to throw for around the same passing yardage as he did last year, 4,200. He's gonna up his touchdowns a little bit. Got him at 26 passing touchdowns. Last year, he didn't have much protection. He was hobbled early on and that kind of affected his play. He had a, a very low rushing output for the season. Wilson had 259 rushing yards and a touchdown to add to those passing totals. And those numbers, his passing numbers were above his career average. But his rushing totals were way down, his rushing touchdowns were down, and his passing touchdowns were down. I think that this year a healthy Russell Wilson is going to bounce back, he's going to bounce back strong. I have him currently ranked as my number three quarterback, even over guys like Drew Brees and Matt Ryan. Now this ranking is very much predicated on his rushing output. I believe that his rushing output is going to return to around his average. I think Wilson could actually double his mark of 259 rushing yards last year. I have him around 460 rushing yards as my personal projection for Russell Wilson this season. And that is going to help his numbers tremendously. Whenever you have a quarterback that can get it done on the ground as well, that is just very, very valuable and an edge that you might have on your opponent if he doesn't have a quarterback that can get it done on the ground. During Wilson's career, he's averaged more than 500 rushing yards and he's averaged over two touchdowns a season on the ground. Wilson's career rushing yardage average is over 500 yards so I don't think 460 is a stretch at all I think Wilson has the wheels still I think he's gonna be able to get it done through the air and on the ground and that is why I have Wilson as my number three quarterback this year in fantasy football I know he is getting a little longer in the tooth but he is a relatively young quarterback he's definitely one of the most athletic quarterbacks Wilson's ESPN ADP, or average draft position, is 61 right now, and I think if you can get him at that spot or a little bit later, I think Russell Wilson could make you a very happy man by the time the end of the season rolls around. Now that we've talked about a breakout star in Russell Wilson, or at least a return to his true form. Now let's go with a bust. A guy that I think is being drafted a little bit too high. This may come as a bit of a surprise that I'm picking on this person because I don't think he's really high on very many people's radars. But Carson Palmer, if you're getting stuck with Carson Palmer near the end of a draft, you have waited too long on a quarterback. I know when he has stayed healthy, he usually is pretty good for 4,000 yards. But at the same time, you gotta look at the people around him. Larry Fitzgerald, he's getting older. He's not getting open as often as he used to. His receivers, he's, he's lost Michael Floyd. John Brown had a bit of a down season. JJ Nelson. They, they have guys that aren't top targets in this league really, besides an aging Fitzgerald so and then you have a stud running back David Johnson he's gonna take a lot of pressure off Carson Palmer they're gonna pound the rock a lot so I think it's safe to say that Palmer's numbers could go down Palmer's five-year averages haven't been that bad he's just under 4,000 yards passing per year around 24 passing touchdowns a year Obviously, you're not going to get much from Palmer on the ground. 
basically you're relying entirely on his passing production, and I think that Bruce Arians and company may ask him to do less than ever before. So that's why I am down at, on Carson Palmer. Palmer's ADP is at 127. That puts him towards the end of the 13th round. And basically, if you've gotten to that point and you find yourself selecting Palmer as your first quarterback, that is not a good sign. I'm not against taking him as a second option, but at the same time, he's a guy that you'll probably want to play depending the matchup. He has a lot of tough matchups in the NFC West. He plays a lot of tough defenses. Seattle obviously comes to mind. And I just think that you'll be better served only rostering one quarterback instead of two with Palmer being your second option. Then you can just go to the waiver wire and find the best matchup. Or maybe you get lucky and find somebody that gets on a roll. Streaming quarterbacks is never a bad idea. And once you master it, it's really... It's really my preferred option. I've been streaming quarterbacks for a while now. I would say the last time I did stream a quarterback was the last year I didn't win a championship. So my sleeper is a man with red hair, Andy Dalton. I know what you guys are probably thinking. Really, Andy Dalton? This is your, your big sleeper pick? I'm looking at Dalton to get back to his 2013 form, where he threw for four, over 4,200 passing yards and 33 touchdowns. And also, over the course of his career, he averages three rushing touchdowns this season. That's pretty good for a guy that you don't exactly think of as a natural runner. He has a great receiver in AJ Green. Obviously, the health of Green is very important to the success of Andy Dalton. I can easily see Dalton throwing for over 4,000 yards and I have him at 25 passing touchdowns. I also chalked him up for three rushing touchdowns. He's capable of running for more and I also think he's capable of passing for more as he's shown in the past. And another nice thing about Dalton is you don't have to worry about turnovers plaguing your score. So I, I think Dalton is a, a very safe pick. I have Dalton as my 15th ranked quarterback. His ADP is 131, so that's the beginning of the 14th round. And I think if you can get Dalton there, that is a great value. He's a he's a guy that I would probably like to pair up with another pretty good quarterback around that time of the draft, looking for two of those guys. But I think that Dalton even by himself can carry your team until you find a suitable option via the waiver wire. My super bargain, I have him as the 12th quarterback in my projections. He His ADP is 132, beginning of the 14th round once again. And this guy is a playmaker. Straight up, can make plays with his feet, can make plays through the air. I'm talking about Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor has only been a starting quarterback for two years now, but since he took over the reins in Buffalo, he has been a sneaky good play in fantasy football. In those two seasons as the starter, he averages just over 3,000 passing yards and over 500 rushing yards. He's rushed for an average of five touchdowns and he's thrown for 18 and a half touchdowns per year over those two seasons. I wasn't exactly thrilled with the news that Sammy Watkins was being shipped out of town, but they did get Jordan Matthews back in a separate trade, and he is a guy that is a good possession receiver, a guy that can make some tough catches over the middle. So that could be something that could help that offense. I think that they do have a lot of un unproven talent there or guys that are just getting acclimated to the system like Anton Bolden, you have the rookie Zay Jones and Jordan Matthews and I also have him rushing for 600 yards and 5 touchdowns this year 
And that is what's really going to separate him from the other quarterbacks that are being selected that deep into the draft. Like I said, beginning of the 14th round, according to ESPN ADP, and I have him as the 12th quarterback. That is insane value. You can even reach from that round to get him. But I think he is a great asset and somebody that should be very valuable come fantasy football draft time. Alrighty, guys, that's going to do it for my quarterback preview. If you have any other questions about my quarterback rankings or projections, comment on this video, tweet at Real Austin Short, hit me up on Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. I'm always down to talk fantasy football. I'm going to be working on my running back rankings and projections shortly. Should have that video up pretty soon. I think I'm going to bring in Josh to talk a little bit about the running backs. So we'll have a two man show next time. If you liked this video, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends, tell them that. They need to check this guy out because he is dropping some real knowledge on you guys. Fancy football season is coming up, and I'm so glad it's back. Thanks for watching once again, guys. Take it easy. See you on the flip side.